All righty. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for your time this morning and joining us on our uh, Cobot Welding Tool webinar. Uh, my name is Josh Pauly. I'm our I lead up our business development and application engineering here at uh, Vectus Automation, and we're uh, here today to talk a little bit about how collaborative robots can help out in your weld shop. Quick outline of today: We'll start off with an overview of our product via our, via a video. Uh, talk a little bit about Vectus Automation, the who, the where, the what, and the why go into details on our product, uh, our system product, and then uh, talk about what makes an application a, a better fit or a, maybe a not so great fit for automation and for cobalt welding in particular. Uh, and then we'll finish things up with a live programming and weld demo. So we'll start off with our product video. Uh, hopefully it's not too choppy over the webinar here, uh, but just wanted to give you an overview of the system and, and how it can help out. Um, we'll talk about this quite a bit, but you know our main mission is to help manufacturers of all sizes, small, medium, and large, um, overcome the shortage of skilled welders. Um, we just hear over and over of we can't find labor, um, I have to reduce costs, I have to improve lead times, um, those sorts of things. And automation can help with a lot of that, um, but it's traditionally had quite a bit of quite a few barriers to entry. And so our goal is to lower those barriers entry to entry um, and make it easier for more folks to. Uh, adopt uh, cobalt or welding automation and so we'll talk about it a lot one of the big things that uh, we really focus on is um, simplifying the uh, programming and setup process you know most of our customers report that they are set up um, DIY within uh, a few hours and welding in production anywhere from the first day to the first uh, few days depending on the complexity of the parts and fixturing and things like that um, and that's our huge goal is to make it a DIY setup system um, where, um, you know, uh, can do manufacturers can, uh, you know, uh, utilize the system and set it up on their own and, and be in production. You don't have to come out to us for training. You don't have to, we don't have to pay to send a tech or you don't have to pay to send a tech on site to your facility. Um, just making it easier as a whole. And a lot of that's that software that you saw right there. We'll talk about it a bit more and you'll see it more on our live uh, welding demo as well. So a little bit more about Vectus. Uh, our name it actually comes from Latin, and uh, it stands for uh, a lever or leverage. And our goal, again, is to be the leverage that manufacturers can use to uh, boost productivity in their weld shop amid all the things that manufacturers are facing today. Shortage of skilled labor, globalization, faster lead times, lower cost. Um, you know, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, I'm sure. So Vectus Automation, we're a universal robot certified systems integrator. Uh, and we're a team of engineers with uh, over 75 years of combined experience in the robotic welding industry. So we've really seen the good, bad, and the ugly of robotic welding, and we're able to take that experience and combine it with the technology of the collaborative robot to, to uh, provide a robust um, system product to help out in your weld shop. We're based out of Fort Collins, Colorado, about an hour north of Denver, uh, and our entire focus is, is on designing and integrating a cobot welding tool to help boost productivity in the weld shop. Um, some key hallmarks that you'll you'll hear me talk about as we go through this: um, ease of use, portability, versatility, and flexibility, uh, quick lead time, and uh, affordable and accessible. Uh, and then we we uh, combine that with peace of mind through our return policy and our rent to own options. And the why? Why do we do it? Um, there is it, the American Welding Society is estimating a shortage of 400,000 welders in the U.S. alone by 2025, and it's our belief that, that the collaborative man plus machine is going to help fill the gap. You can't solve the problem with all robotics alone. You can't solve the problem um, just through education. We think that it's a combination of uh, all of those together that's gonna help fill the gap. So dry, diving into our product a little bit more, um, what you see here on the right side of your screen is, is our system product, the, the Vectus Cobalt Welding Tool. Some of the features on it, uh, you know, it's portable. It's a three foot by six foot footprint that doesn't require anchoring. Um, it's on caster wheels, so you can bring the cobot to the work um, or flexibly move it around your system based on you know, your plant's workflow uh, that, that may or may, may change. It's versatile, so you can fixture and weld on the cart surface itself. That's a modular fixturing grid right there, two inch by two inch center holes um, with a variety of, of uh, standard fixturing components. The reach of the arm is about 51 inches. And we've got a free drive button that you'll see me utilize in the live demo um, that allows you to, to hand teach and push and pull the cobot um, to the actual weld positions. Makes teaching very, very simple. 
Uh, and it's flexible. So again, it's a three foot by six foot footprint. And for those, those on the call today that may not have uh, three phase power, I know it's a major expense to bring it in. And so uh, our system um, does not require three phase. Uh, the robot runs on a 120 wall outlet and the welder can run on anything between 208 to 575, uh, including 240 single phase. So there's a lot of flexibility in, in how you set that up. Here are just a few pictures of uh, some of the applications that our system has tackled. Um, this, partic this particular picture on the bottom left here um, shows an example of where a customer um, butt the cart up to the side of an existing fixture. This in particular was a large uh, part they were welding on. Um, but we've got customers doing that with an additional cart, um, an existing smaller table that just holds small, small parts. So it allows the flexibility to have a larger work zone but you also maintain the compactness and the portability of the, uh, the three foot by six foot cart that the system is packaged on. Just a few more application pictures. Uh, you see, you know, um, you know, thin 16 gauge welds here, 316 fillets, all the way up to multi-pass uh, uh, heavy penetration, uh, heavy welds, um, and anything in between, outside corners, uh, flare bevels, grooves, uh, those sorts of things. Um, and just a few other application pictures, kind of some neat, uh, actually the video playing on the right there is one of my favorite applications, a customer that uh, uh, doing 160 tacks per fan shroud you see there, um, pretty mind numbing task for a manual welder that most manual welders aren't going to want to do. Um, you know, the, the cobot was able to lend a, a helping hand there uh, and tackle those tacks and, and um, relinquish those welders and let them do uh, work on some more skilled weldments that uh, aren't as mind-numbing. So, neat example there, uh, circular welds, ag equipment parts, uh, and then again, so a different variety of multi-pass thicker material. So, as you heard me mention, you know, a key focus of ours um, at Vectus is ease of use, primarily through software on dependence. So, we have our own in-house software engineering group and development group um, that's creating our, uh, our interface here and our, our weld control system. And that's allowing us, uh, our customers, to get DIY set up and welding within hours of the system arriving on their dock. Um, you know, some of the ways that we achieve that are through graphical programming. So there's no coding. It reads, you know, people ask me, you know, what's what's your programming language? And it's it's truly English, Spanish, or French. Um, you know, uh, that's that's it reads very simply, reads very easily um, for, for anyone to pick up. And they don't have to be a, a programmer already. Um, simple commands like air move and weld, start, weld in, things like that. We put visual context right there on the pendant, you know, so how, you know, how do I program a circle segment? Um, it's right there. You, you need to teach it a midpoint and an endpoint of the circle um, or that arc segment, right? And uh, we put that on the pendant so you don't have to go dig through a thousand page manual to find that one page that explains uh, how a circle is programmed or a circle segment is programmed. Um, we have total weld and weave control through the pendant, so you can you know, control travel speed, voltage, wire feed speed, uh, crater fill time, crater cool time, and then a variety of weave styles as well, zigzags, inline whips, et cetera. Um, and the system comes preloaded actually from our factory with, uh, with baseline weld parameter templates as well. So if you're, if you're running a quarter inch uh, 035 fillet, you can just pull that from our common data library and then that library is expandable as well so if you have your own weld procedure specifications that you'd like to load in you can load those right in and just pick those from the library and you know because we have our own in-house software team we're constantly developing tools that uh, help customers speed up programming and those are really based on customer feedback you know we had a customer saying hey i you know I, i'm doing the same part in an array right can can i get some help there so we developed the pattern tool um, we're, um, you know, we've got a tack program, uh, stitch welding, makes stitch, stitch welding easier, uh, touch sensing, and then we're, we're coming up with a lot of really new innovative features as well. So stay tuned. And of course, we're, we're always an open feedback loop. Um, if, if you have a specific software request, you know, since we have in-house development, that's something that we can, that, that we can help with as well. And then, you know, the third piece to bring, to make, uh, you know, automation more accessible to more folks out there is to make it affordable. Um, so we have an affordable all-in system price that includes shipping, and that's our real focus is what's the price to be able to, for, for you to be able to ready to weld, right? Uh, and, and that's what our real focus here, and we make that as affordable uh, as possible. The system ships fully integrated. Again, most folks are set up and welding within a few hours. Um, we do offer a 30-day return policy, that safety net. We've never had a, 
a purchase return, but it's a safety net for folks. And, and part of that reason for no returns, we believe, is that um, we really help out on the application evaluation side. So when you reach out to us, we do a deep dive together collaboratively uh, to look at your applications and make sure they're a good fit for automation. Um, and if they're not, we'll be honest with you and, and provide some recommendations to, to make it more automation friendly. Um, our typical lead time is about four weeks. and We do have expediting options uh, within that as well if needed. Um, we, we offer a financing program with a third party partner with pretty incredibly uh, competitive interest rates. And we do also operate a short term uh, rental uh, and a rental rent to own uh, program as well for those looking to kind of to try before you buy or if you have a, a specific project um, that's going to need, uh, you know, increased capacity just for a short time. It is a limited fleet, but reach out to us. We can talk about more uh, on all of this. We can talk about an application evaluation and also provide some firm pricing for you as well. Just wanted to share a few customer testimonials. Um, one of our first customers actually up in Montana um, called us uh, uh, when he received the system and told us that uh, we were cutting shrink wrap in the morning and in production by the afternoon. Uh, kind of talks about the um, ease of use and ease of setup. Um, uh, the CEO and, and the senior director of engineering at uh, agricultural equipment company out in uh, eastern Colorado said it started contributing the day it was delivered. It didn't make sense to invest in robotic welding until Vectus. They have changed the game. Um, another small and, and mid-sized job shop in Colorado, it's singing sweet lullabies. Cheaper, easier to use, and saves us time relative to space relative to the traditional robotic welding alternatives that they had looked at. And lastly, uh, one of our customers out in Illinois um, reported they're running three 16-inch fillets at 33 inches a minute, which is hauling along and, and quite a, a, a good weld deposition rate. And then it only took him an hour to program his first production part. So the next section, we want to kind of shift and talk about what, what makes an application fit for automation and, and, and automation ready. Um, and real quick to hit on the benefits of automation, when it's done right, uh, you know, you're gonna soften the blow of the skilled welder and the skilled programmer shortage. A lot of traditional solutions require a skilled programmer um, that also seem to be in short supply as well. Um, you're gonna improve weld quality and consistency, improve the safety and reduce operator fatigue and operator monotony on those mind numbing parts like that tack part I mentioned. Um, you're gonna be able to leverage flexible COBA automation for smaller batches, sub-assemblies, tacking ops, things that you know, traditional automation requires such a high volume to generate that ROI. Um, with with Cobot solutions and flexible automation solutions, you can do smaller batches. You can do those sub-assemblies and different operations. It's going to lower manufacturing costs, not only in the weld shop and the weld department, um, but by also reducing post-weld operations and, and non-value-add tasks like grinding and wire wheeling. We've got customers significantly reducing or even eliminating um, post-weld grinding. It's also going to help you reduce overwelding on those manually welded parts. I mean, there's a there's a significant bump in weld size and thus time and, and material uh, going from a three sixteenths to a quarter inch to a three eighths inch weld. Um, and with the control of automation, you're able to reduce that that overwelding uh, issue. Um, there's more business potential uh, through increased capacity and then also reducing lead times and cost. And lastly, it's going to help reduce the all-in cost of automating uh, when you look at multiple facets, you know, system costs, system delivery time, your programming and fixturing time and cost, the ability to redeploy the system, and then also, um, you know, uh, the fact that it's not taking up too much floor space. But to unlock those benefits, you got to do automation right. And from our experience, you know, our 75 years of combined experience doing robotic welding, these are the three things that we've seen really lead to folks being able to do it right. Uh, number one, consistency is king. Number two, start with a low hanging fruit. And number three, three selecting the right champion to, to um, run the system. So let's dive into those. Number one, consistency is king. Um, for automation and robots and cobots, um, repeatability is always gonna be more important than accuracy. And that's actually why we put the darts outside the bullseye. It doesn't matter that it's in the bullseye from the robot's perspective. It just matters that it's in the same spot that it was originally programmed. And there are two dimensions to um, consistency when we talk about weld application. The first is dimensional consistency, which means the part needs to be uh, in the same location relative to the robot every time you bring it up, right? Um, because you, you teach a program and you say, hey, robot, you know, start your weld here, end your weld here. 
it simply repeats that over and over in production. So if that part and that joint is not the same spot every time, uh, the robot doesn't inherently know that and won't be able to go there uh, and weld in the correct location. And secondly, for weld application, is that the cross section of the weld joint is consistent as well. Uh, and so, you know, some particular ones where that uh, manifests are, are outside corners. You know, if you have an outside corner you're trying to weld that, you can weld an outside corner beautifully um, with a cobot. Um, but if those plates start to move and create a, a varying weld cross section, um, you're going to get a varying weld quality as well and a, and a degradation in weld quality. So, those are two things to look out for, for with consistency. Um, and there are some technologies out there to, to help manage inconsistencies, and we can talk about those for, for you know, specific to application. But what we've seen is that the most surefire way to, to um, improve uh, your consistency off the robot and your weld quality is to improve the upstream processes and the fixturing. And we're seeing more and more that's, that's possible with, you know, more lasers in the upstream, more CNC plasma in the upstream more CNC benders or consistent benders, right? And so that, you know, if you can fix the upstream and create some great fixturing, that's the, that's the simplest way to, uh, to solve the issue. And so some, some green lights there, um, no gaps or consistent small gaps, uh, a laser or a CNC plasma table, as I mentioned, CNC bent or consistently bent parts, um, pre-tacked parts is typically a plus, plus if, those, if that tacking fixture is consistent. Um, Pre-tacking is not a requirement. We got plenty of customers running um, you know, uh, piece parts and hold and locate fixtures. Um, some red flags, manual cutting, you know, if you see parts being banged into a, into a fixture or, sh or hammered into a fixture. Um, if you're doing a lot of pre-weld grinding or manual joint prep, that's typically not going to be able to get you that consistency, the weld joint cross-section that we're looking for. And lastly, open root and full penetration. Um, we've not seen a, a very robust uh, production automation solution of any type uh, be able to handle open root or full full penetration. Um, so number two, start with a low hanging fruit. One of my colleagues uh, said, you know, if a person looks like a robot all day, it's probably right for automation. That can be more true. And what we tend to see is that there is a temptation uh, to automate those larger, more complex parts that represent a pretty large labor drain whenever they go to the shop. But what we've seen be the most effective deployment um of of automation and, and our system in particular is on the small simple monotonous parts and sub assemblies and, and typically where those manifest themselves are the pallets of parts you know outside of manual weld stations uh it lets you shift your skilled welders to those skilled weldments like that uh, one customer I, I was showing that video of earlier um focus on the monotonous the the brackets the small parts the uh the sub assemblies and shift your skilled welders to the large complex skilled weldments and at least start there, right? Then you can move on to the medium hanging fruit and the high hanging fruit, but start with the low hanging fruit, get those quick wins, start to gain that ROI uh, and start there. So some green lights there, um, MIG welds on 16 gauge or thicker, um, TIG applications um, that could potentially be done with MIG. I'll show some pictures of that here in a little bit that are, are pretty neat um, where, you know, if you can move from, from manual TIG to Cobot MIG, you can really see a boost in productivity and we're happy to look at an application evaluation with you on that. Um, steel or stainless steel are typically the easiest. Aluminum is, is possible, but trickier. So we just want to take a closer look at it with you. Um, relatively open for torch access, being able to get the, the torch into the, uh, actual weld joints. Um, planar welds that require minimal or, or no repositioning. And then a high arc time relative to the size and the number of welds uh, on the on the part are typically going to be a, a benefit as well. And lastly, the 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 final key is the right champion. Um, and so when you're when you're looking at who's going to run this system or who's going to program the system, who's going to own the system, what we've found in our experience to be the most important qualities of that person um, are not the technical, the hard skills. It's actually the character attributes of eagerness and ownership. If you grab someone who wants to see the system succeed, um, the technical knowledge can be learned pretty quickly, actually. Um, and we've got, you know, instructional videos, uh, an instructional user guide. There's tons of resources on welding out there, and I'm sure you have resources internally as well. Um, if you've got someone who really cares and wants to see the system work, um, that's going to be your best champion, typically. And we've seen them come from all backgrounds, owners, um, owner sons and daughters, uh, engineers, shop foremen, machine operators, and welders. Uh, and it doesn't need to be a welder or a programmer. It can be someone who's eager to learn uh, and is able to do that. Um, 
So uh, lastly, just want to share a few pictures before we move to the live demo. Um, when you heard me talking about, you know, TIG to MIG applications, we've, we've seen a few of these conversions. Um, you know, here's a few examples on the left of, of welds that our system has laid down. Um, and then you see some on the right of manual TIG, uh, and you're kind of able to see that, hey, maybe there are some applications that uh, can be converted. And that's a huge increase in productivity. We're talking 10 to 20x if you're going from TIG to MIG typically. Uh, versus two to three X typically for manual MIG to Cobot MIG. So I'm um, happy to talk about that, look at specific applications if uh, anyone on, on the call is doing that TIG right now. Just want to share a few slam dunk applications that we've seen before that are uh, typically make great um, production welds as well. You know, again, you're seeing the fillets, the grooves, the bevels, the MIG, 16 gauge or thicker, things like that. Um, I get this question a lot on reachability, you know, how, how far can the robot reach? So the, the, the reach is 51 inches, and that's just kind of a robot industry standard me measured from, um, you know, axis one to the wrist flange with the robot extended fully out, right? Which is rarely, if ever, used as an actual reach, but that's how the industry standard is. And then um, beyond that, there's about 17 inches from the wrist flange to where the weld wire uh, comes out uh, at the end of the torch. So with welding particularly, particularly, the reachability is very dependent on the weld angle and the part geometry. So you see here on the right side, a couple of pictures of applications um, that are, that are uh, easy to reach and actually where the torch is gaining us that additional reach, right? Um, what you see here are uh, a couple of pictures where that torch is actually kind of working against us because we're doing a vertical weld on these uh, handrails where you actually have to kind of do a vertical down and reach that torch back towards the robot to point the wire at that joint. Um, so it's very dependent on the weld angle and the torch geometry. Um, as you see in these pictures, reachability is something that we help out with in the application evaluation. So feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to look at your application in, uh, in more detail and we can kind of work through uh, reachability and where you place the part and things like that. Um, I did want to hit on, you know, one of the really neat things about collaborative robots is that um, because they have built-in safety, uh, it allows for some very flexible multi-zoning and multi-part setups. So you see a few example of those, examples of those here, um, you know, like uh, on the bottom left picture, a uh, customer is welding uh, with the cobot on one side while the operator is actually loading and unloading on the other side. Uh, and then the cobot and the operator simply switch back and forth to keep that uh, your your system at 100% utilization um, or near 100% utilization. And then you see on the right side just a few more examples of, of how that manifests itself. And lastly, before the live demo, I want to talk quickly on uh, the importance of gaps and show some pictures of that. So, you know, the, the far left picture there, um, you know, that's a gap that's manageable. And the best part about that, uh, that uh, joint actually is that it's consistent from corner to corner to corner to corner on this part, and it's also consistent from part to part to part to part. So you can create a weld parameter set that, that fills that outside corner in really nicely. In the middle picture, the tough part there is that that joint already has a big gap, and the worst part is that it actually varies from part to part to part, and even from corner to corner. You know, the next corner is closed up, uh, the third corner it's skewed a little bit, the fourth corner is an even bigger gap, very tough to get a weld parameter set that can robustly weld all of those different cross-section um, uh, considerations there. And then lastly, on the far right side, you know, 16 gauge miter joint, certainly possible, but when that gap starts to uh, open up a little more, you're more prone to blowing through and causing weld issues. And so the last thing we'll finish on on the presentation uh, part of the webinar is uh, kind of a, a final ode to the importance of gaps here. You know, this is one of our customers that is doing uh, you see that gap there on the far left side, pretty sizable gap actually um, about the material thickness, but it's incredibly consistent. So um, they were able to make a weld parameter set. You saw it with that weave in there, the vector, uh, the the weave um, from the vector software, um, where they're able to fill that in and make just an absolutely gorgeous weld like you see right there. So um, you know that's just the importance of consistency when we talk about uh, robotics. So uh, if any questions and I will uh, get us set up for our uh, next step, our live uh, programming and weld demo here. All righty. Okay.
So on the left side of the screen here, we've got uh, a live webcam feed of our system. And on the right side of the screen is actually an, uh, an emulator of the pendant there. So you can actually see all the uh, uh, programming that's going on there. So what I'm going to do is simply make a, um, uh, a simple weld here, a simple fillet weld on that T-plate to kind of show you how quick and easy it is to program a simple weld. And I can show you some of the other applications examples that we've got here as well. So um, I'm going to come up to the pendant. I'm going to hit the new program button. Uh, I don't need to save my changes right now. Uh, so I come over here and every program that we typically start with starts with an air move. So some move kind of away from the parts that allows the operator to get in, load unload parts and things like that. So um, all I did there was I hit the air move button on the left side. That's going to be adding uh, program instructions to my program tree in the middle. And then the, on the right side of the pendant there um, is my detail pane that I'm allowed to uh, 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 make the changes and actually do the uh, detailed programming with. So I added an air move to my robot program here. Um, and I'm just going to set my air move up uh, over here, kind of out of the way, so that if I was going to load unload, I could I could do that. What you saw me doing there was using that free drive button that I mentioned, that when I push that, it puts the robot into a soft servo mode that allows me to push and pull that around uh, and move it actually to the places I want to program it, which is really nice. When I let go of that, uh, the robot is rigid, uh, so it, it stays where it's um, uh, left at. So I like this air move position here. I'm going to go ahead and update my waypoint there. Uh, and then the next thing I want to do is, and when I, sorry, when I hit the update waypoint, what it does is it stores the current position of the, of the cobot as that target, um, that air move point. So next, I want to make a weld. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the weld button there. And it's going to, every time I hit the weld button, it's going to bring in a weld template. And that weld template includes a weld approach, a weld start, a weld in, and a weld depart. Uh, by default. Um, and that I can add through moves to that as well, right? So if, if I have something like this joint here where it's a compound joint, or if I'm doing a circle or something like that, I can add through moves that allow me to, to vary the position uh, as I go around a, a certain um, application. And so I could add through moves that are linear or also circular segments as well. And I could do something that has linear, then circular, then linear, then circular, circular, uh, whatever the compound path may end up being. But for this example, we're just doing a simple straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those weld through points. Um, so next, I'm going to teach my weld start here. So I'm going to use my free drive button, come down here, line up my torch and my wires in the joint, check my work angle, and check my push-pull angle. I like where that's at. Uh, so now that I like where that's at, I'm going to go ahead and hit update waypoint, which takes the current position of the robot saves it to my, as my weld start point. Next, I want to hit uh, my weld end point, which I just want to move along the T-plate here. And I could use the free drive button again. Another cool way to, to move the cobot around is actually via XYZ handlebars that allow me to um, uh, move the robot relative to a certain axis. So I can go ahead here and move uh, in the direction of that straight line of that plate. And the nice thing about that is it allows me to uh, maintain my uh, constant torch angles, too. Um, so I like that position. I think right there. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I program my start. I program my end of my weld. The approach and depart points are actually automatically programmed by default based on where I teach the start and the end. Just save some time for the programmer. So they don't have to go treat, teach the approach and depart with the correct angles. So the way I'm going to end uh, this program here is I'm just going to finish up my same air move. So instead of having to program that, program that again, I can just copy that air move and paste it below my weld template. Uh, and so that uh, allows me to uh, just save some time by copying and pasting. And lastly, I can rename this as well uh, to help keep track of my program. So I'm going to name this T-plate uh, demo. Uh, as my weld. Okay, so I've got my program ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and save this program. So if we wanted to call it up again, again we could. We'll name this our Vectus demo program. Okay, and now that my program's saved uh, and my program's taught, I can go ahead and run a dry run. And a dry run essentially runs the exact same um, uh, program that it would be as if the weld was on. 
it just leaves the arc off. So I can make sure that my program is set up right uh, and I like my parameters. And speaking of that, the last thing I'm gonna do before we do that is actually add in my weld process parameters. So I come over to here to my process tab. Um, I can either use data from my common library. Again, we've got some examples there. Um, or I can, uh, for a given weld, I can actually type in the specific parameters that I'd like to run for that certain weld. In this case, we're just gonna use some of the parameters right out of the box. They're running a pulse, wheel, uh, pulse weld waveform, doing a quarter inch fillet with 035 wire. Um, so we're all good to go there. I'm going to uh, dry run it, and I know I'm dry running it by this icon here. This is welding uh, blocked. That's welding live. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, leave it as welding blocked, and I can check that in my status screen here as well. So we're good to go. I can hit play and it's gonna move and execute the program. You see the approach point and the start point there. That's looking great. I like how that dry run's growing. So now, uh, once the dry run's complete, uh, all I do to actually uh, live weld is make sure we've got gas, which we do, uh, and then I will simply hit that icon to make the weld live. I'm gonna step away here, put my arc flash protection on, and we'll go ahead and uh, live weld this here. Fire in the hole. Alrighty, let's check out that weld. You saw it doing a little zigzag weave there again on those larger uh, um, welds. That's an option available to you to be able to uh, get the toes to wet out nicely. So that turned out uh, pretty nice there, a little quarter inch fillet. And then just wanted to show some of the other applications again. You know, here's an example where through moves were used uh, along with circular moves um, to create that on that 16 gauge tube there. The, the base flange of the tube and the gusset was actually all one path, just uh, uh, strung together there. See an example of um, pulse welding 3 16 fillet. That was run at 31 inches a minute, actually. So again, uh, moving along there. Uh, Multi-pass weld, and you see some penetration profiles in that multi-pass as well. Um, uh, compound path, and then just some various other applications that uh, customers have done as well. So with that, uh, I think we can open it, open it up to any questions. And again, just want to say thank you to everybody for joining the webinar this morning and uh, look forward to speaking with you about your application. And please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions.